So today we're gonna make chicken cutlets. Uh, obviously, chicken. Uh, I go with about, uh, what is this? 3.8 pounds. Um, I usually like about five pounds, but these are some nice looking cutlets, so uh, we will trim the fat over there. One olive oil, some eggs. Uh, I use Progresso. Uh, breadcrumbs, Italian style. You don't have to if you get regular uh, breadcrumbs. I do like to add a little Parmesan cheese, some garlic powder, and uh, oregano and basil. So I'm going to show you how we cut these bad boys up and uh, prepare them uh, for cutlets. And then we're going to make chicken cutlet parmesan. So I still have sauce from the last time we made it. It's been frozen. And uh, we're going to thaw it out and uh, yeah, we're going we're to make some nice little cutlets. So I'm going back. Okay, so we're gonna see, I'm going to show you how we slice these guys up now. Um, I usually keep this... I'll keep the package around just to uh, toss out the fat. I always trim the fat off. People that don't trim the fat off the chicken is fucking gross. So let's do one at a time. So we'll take, here, let's do this this way so we make it a little pretty if we can. So I like all this. Nasty. That means you're going to lose some meat, but that's all right. It's just, that's going to happen. All right. So this is the way my mother taught me. This and uh, this is the way her mother taught her. This is this is chicken cutlet parmesan. Uh, this is a nice. It's not, actually not a very difficult meal to make. Uh, this is a couple of steps, but it's not very hard. And um, if you if you spend the time to uh, prepare this properly, you can you can impress people. Um, it's a it's a lot of work. All right. So let's see, we still got a little bit of fat here. Okay. Um, by the way, don't touch your eyes or mouth uh, while you're touching raw chicken. Uh, handling raw chicken uh, does contain salmonella. So I. Uh, I try to make this part as sanitary as possible. So like my hands are clean, I wash them. And uh, afterwards I will wash my hands again before I go do all this stuff in, in the process. Um, yes, you are going to have to touch raw meat. I'm sorry. Right, I think that's about all I can get off of this. Um, like there is that little bit in there, but I should be able to slice that off when we actually cut cutlets up, which we're right now okay so you'll notice with a cutlet um usually there's a fat side and a thin side i usually go with the fat side first and then what we'll do and it's, it might be a little tough to see if i'm right-handed so i'm sorry okay, maybe we'll do this we'll do this so what i do is we go like this so i'm gonna i'm gonna cut this into thirds right so we're gonna go boom boom so let's go right here. So we're going to just slice, and I put my hand on here, and I can kind of guide about how thick this is. We just go right through it. Go all the way. Look at that. And that's a beautiful cutlet. Look at that. Bam. Okay, I'm going to stick that guy over here. And we'll go again. Now I want to do this about halfway. Usually that third cutlet will be a little bit weird, like it's got little holes in it. But that middle one is usually the usually the nice one. You don't want them too thick. You don't want them too thin. Um, if it's too thick, it'll it'll take longer to cook. If it's too thin, it'll cook too fast. Um, honestly, the biggest issue you have is you want to have them all more or less about the same thickness, so they'll all cook about the same. Sometimes what I have done, like if 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 because there's no cutting this again, like this is it. This is this is as thick as this cutlet is gonna be. So um, what I have done is I have tenderized. I have a I have a tenderizer. You can do it. Um, I don't really know how much value there is in it, but you can. Okay. So here we go. Boom. So now I get cut off all this fat. Like these are easy. I like when it's right, right there on the edge, which you can just 
So. Sometimes just using that to take it off. It's easy. Okay. Usually, like, there's a little rind at the top, like that. I would much rather lose a little bit of meat than leave a little bit of fat. My mother-in-law likes to say, the fat's where all the flavor is. That's what old people say when they can't cook right. When people don't know how to cook. They say the fat's where all the flavor is because they don't want to take the time to cook with love. Cook with love, people. That's the biggest thing. That's the best advice I can give you if you want to cook for other people. Cook with love. Take the time. You're going to serve this to people, for Christ's sakes. Have a little pride. <laughs> All right. So let's cut this guy now. <clears throat> I have to get behind the camera to do this. See, so there's that little bit of fat right there. I'm not going to worry too much about it. We get that when we cut it. All right. There's still, yeah, there's still some here. Let's get that off. There we go. Okay. All right. I missed. All right. Let's do this. So there we go. So we're going to cut it once. And you can kind of, by doing this, you can sort of feel the depth of how thick this is. And, I mean, look at that. Oh, that's pretty. There we go. Look at that. Look how nice that is. And you're going to feel it taper at the, at the end, the, at the skinny end. Uh, there's no way around that. Okay, and I will stop and check, like make sure that I'm doing this the way that I want to. This is one is going to be a little bit thin. <laughs> Actually, making this for uh, I have a neighbor that um, we we found out back in uh, not to not to bum everybody out here, but we found out back in December that um, his wife was uh, diagnosed with uh, stage four pancreatic cancer, and uh, she passed last weekend. So. I finally have a couple minutes. Figured out. I was gonna make them some chicken cutlets. It's a nice thing you do. Wow, this is thick. I may make this into four. All right. Yeah, yeah. It was a nice thing you do. It's something that I learned. Um, something I learned when I my mother died. I mean, that was. Seventeen years ago, going on in July, um, my my neighbor from across the street, this woman named Mary, she was uh, she was friends with my mom for the entire time I knew them. Obviously, I mean, I been I grew up in that house, so she um, yeah she was she was our neighbor my entire life, and um, I played with her son Mike. When we were kids, then we got high together when we got older, but whatever, that's a different story. The point is, um, it was the week of her death, and uh, she brought over a casserole. I never really understood why. Like, when she first brought it over, I was like, wow, thanks. And, and in my head, I'm going, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? And, uh, Didn't think anything of it. I put it in the fridge. Moved on with my day. I mean, I was smoking a lot of weed back then. You know, a lot of it was medicinal. Some of it was just because I liked getting high. But whatever, that's a different story. Like I said. So, um... Put it away. I didn't think about it. We were... Got to be later on in the day. 
dealing with affairs like you do when somebody's dead. And uh, suddenly realize, and, and I was married at the time, my wife was pregnant with my son, who's now um, 16. But, um, yeah, I just, man, I'm hungry. And, uh, starving, what do we do? Went, oh, yeah, Mary brought over that food. Let's just go get some. And I went put, and it was great. And it was exactly, that's exactly why you do it, I guess, because... Yeah, you're dealing with shit. You're not thinking about cooking. So now, ever since then, every time somebody I know dies, I try and make them a meal. Try and make them something nice. And maybe it'll help them the way it helped me. There we go. That's a little thick, but we'll make it work. And this one, see, like, that always happens. When it's the bottom, it's always a little weird. But I'm sure I can make it work. All right. One more. One more. Then we can get to the part where we, we bread. You see like a flap like that? There's nothing worth saving here. Just chop it off. Alright. Like this. I'm not gonna use that. See, now, the reason I don't worry too much about this stuff here, because if you try and peel that out, it, it'll it'll run all the way through the whole cutlet, and you'll be killing yourself trying to get rid of that. So some, some fat's just going to have to stay. <clears throat> and we just need to make those cutlets extra good. So they won't even notice. Just like this. Like I, you know, I'm a fucking nuts get rid of that. All right. Okay, one more. One more. This is pretty thick too, but I think we can get three out of this. I don't think I can do four like that other one. So, alright. Obviously, if you use a longer knife, um, you wouldn't have it to where it's only about halfway through, but this is my sharp knife. This is the knife my mother gave me to cut chicken, so I still use it. All right, we'll be back, and uh, we'll show you how we bread it. So now we're going to make our cutlets. Okay, so here's everything we need. We've got our eggs. This is going to be our... Um, breadcrumb and then over here is where we're baking now <clears throat> let's look up here uh, I cook them slow I my mom used to do this in a pan on a stove and it comes out terrible you got to sit there and monitor it It splatters everywhere and it's horrible do it in your up so all right we're gonna put it on it's come set for 350 I, I like to put this down to I mean, 275 you, you want it to cook slow I 
actually. You can do 250. Cook it slow. You want the outside to cook about the same rate as the inside. Like it's going to be a little bit off, but you want that inside to get nice and juicy. All right, so olive oil. I use a shit ton of it. Just start coating your pan. And then what I do, and I got two pans here. I've actually got more. If it, if it turns out I need more, I got more. I use a fuck ton of oil, olive oil. I used to buy the more expensive stuff, but... Okay, not necessary. I'm going to drain it all off anyway. So what I do is I make sure I coat the whole pan. I don't know how well you can pick that up on the video, but... I want to make sure we coat the whole pan. And I will still have more when we go get to cooking it. I'm going to flip it over a bunch of times. I'll add more. Um, you drain it afterwards. Like, you're going to drain all that oil up. You don't want all that shit. But you want it to stay nice and juicy. All right, so there's one. I'm going to this guy, too. I already ate lunch, but I'm suddenly starving. I feel like that's a theme. I say that a lot on stream, too. Like, I'm starving. I just ate dinner, but I'm starving. Okay. We still have our olive oil standing by, and I, I got a shit ton more. All right, so our eggs, we wanted to have these well beaten. How well beaten? Well, I think you ought to, you ought to beat these eggs like, beat these eggs like they, they owe you money. And they've been ducking you for like three weeks, right? And then you finally catch up to those eggs, and when you do, you find them fucking your girlfriend. That's how much you should beat these eggs. Or wife, I guess, if you're married, but girlfriend's funny. Or boyfriend's even funnier than that. <laughs> This should be plenty. I'll put some Parmesan cheese. How much? Oh, this is still sealed. This has actually been living in my fridge for a while. Wait, do we have one? Yeah. All right. See, so yeah, how much? Let's throw a bunch in there. Not too much. Though. You don't want too much. Same thing with uh, with your oregano. Don't, don't put too much. You can't overpower it. So just, eh. How much? Some. Okay. I really need some more. Oh, basil. Basil's not too uh, overpowering, so you can you can kind of go a little heavy on that if you want. And then uh, I'll put some garlic powder in there. And again, this is Italian style breadcrumbs, so that may have a lot of that stuff in there, but I like to put a little garlic powder. Specifically, the powder. Um, I don't, uh, you know, you don't use fresh milk. So it's all right. And then, so what I'll do is, yeah, then we mix. And I just, I just do it with my hands. You're gonna get your hands in it anyway. There's no getting around that. It should, it should mix fine. There shouldn't be any pockets in there that's like, oh, ooh, that was a whole shit ton of garlic, dude. That shouldn't happen. All right, and I level it out because you're going to be, you're going to be dipping your, your chicken in here. All right, so number one, we go in the egg and, uh, and then flip it over. You want to coat that whole chicken with egg. Then... Oven's ready. 
Very good. Okay. So, don't do that. It will be slippery. I'm trying to drain. You don't want to. There's a chance I could run out of egg. I have more eggs, but still. I hate having a whole lot of extra egg. All right. Then boom, we're gonna put that in there. Now I use my right hand for the breadcrumb because I try. I try and keep one hand having egg and one hand having breadcrumb. And then flip that. Over. We'll just let that guy soak in there for a second. Now, boom. And then I always do this because you can. You want to get it all in the little nooks and crannies. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Right. And we'll lay it out right there. And now we're, we're ready for the second one. Boom. And then we'll put the third one in the egg. Remember, you want all that entire cutlet to be covered in the egg because of this next step, so. so. Remember, this is going to be chicken parm, so if it's not beautiful cutlets, it's going to be covered in sauce and mozzarella cheese. Ain't nobody going to know nothing. Alright. This is going to be messy. There's, there's no way around that. Okay. This guy's going to be a little bit weird, but that's all right. Okay. Boom. Hmm. I'm still better about lunch than starving. Ew, why do you care so much? Go fuck yourself. Alright. Yeah, that cut was a little bit thick. I may run into egg too. Yeah, breadcrumbs as possible. Movement here. Well, I might. I might better get this guy in there. Yeah, I'm gonna make it work. If it won't fit, make it. Okay. Um, let's see. I don't want this guy. Here. Like I said, my mom used to do this in a pan, but uh, I always felt like they got overcooked too. Like they get rubbery. If you overcook them, they get rubbery. That's why I cook it on a real low heat. And um, keep an eye on it, but you let it just let it cook longer than you would have normally, and that comes out better.
big. Holy mackerel. I didn't realize how big that kind of barely fits in here. You can cut them smaller. I, I usually prefer to keep them big. But, um, I mean, you can make them half that size, honestly. If it's easier to, especially if it's easier to bread. And the beauty of making cutlets like this, you don't have to make these into uh, chicken parm. You can just make cutlets. I, I've done it. My uh, my, my father-in-law can't do tomato sauce anymore. His um, stomach can't handle the acidity. So I've had times where I've made chicken parm, and I'll just I'll keep a little section of that, uh, just chicken cutlets, and. Um, it's, it's still pretty damn delicious. My wife loves them. She's also a slut. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I, I have been instructed to say on video, uh, coming home now. I've said it. Now I get extra brownie points. <laughs> it's <like> ridiculous. Alright. <laughs> Hold on, let's do this on the side. See, I just got, I, I took all that oil up now. It's fine, I'll use it, but I wanted to coat the whole bottom of the pan. And then, like I said, I'm going to add more anyway.
Yeah, it's gonna be quilts. In here, um, here, wait for me. I better do that. Give myself a little more room. Like as you start to cook, they will, um, they will firm up. There we go. Like that. Wow. Okay. Uh, we will come back. I'll get these in the oven and I'll show you uh, what they look like as they start to cook. All right. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, look at that. Right, so we're gonna flip them. See, and you can see like they're firming up. Look at that, look how pretty it is. Now this one is, is probably one of the thickest. So actually, um, what I like to do is, um, when we get close to the end, I will take the thickest one and cut it open, see if it's red inside. It should be white all the way through. So, and they do shrink up some too as they cook. So, all right, we're gonna we're gonna hit this guy with some more olive oil. I just put it all in here. Boom. Yeah, we want we don't want it to stick. That would be bad. Again, we'll check it for a little while. It's been about, uh, I don't know, 15 minutes. Let's see, we, we let it cook for, shit, I don't know, maybe a half hour. As you can see, like, I used up a lot of that olive oil. This was full of the top. I'm going to refill that, and uh, we'll be back. Let's have another look. Oh, yeah, these are looking pretty. It's still a little bit underdone, um, but you see, it's starting to brown. Um, yeah, oh, that's good. And some of these thicker ones can take a little bit longer. Ooh, yeah, that one is falling apart. It smells delicious, too. just gonna let that cook a little bit longer. That was about another 15 minutes, so it's been about a half hour now. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. It's uh, now it's starting to sizzle, which we want. So. Oh, look how pretty that is! And it's still a little bit underdone. We're gonna let it cook a little longer. So that's looking good, looking good, especially like these thick ones. We're gonna let those cook. Some of these thin ones, that might be done. I don't know. I'm gonna let it cook a little longer. Yeah, like some of these, I guess probably only got another couple minutes to go. Like these three and that, those two, maybe that one. So let's see what we're going to go on here. So now what we do is we have a plate. We are going to take some paper towels. I, I do a layer of paper towels for each one. Okay. I'm just going to leave this here. Just give me a place to put it. So, uh, all right. We've got... <clears throat> some, of these, some of these really thin ones can go. Um, this is definitely done. Look how juicy it is. That's beautiful. Uh, this guy, I believe, is done... Oop, fell apart. I had a feeling it might. Boom. Uh, 
this guy is done. I think I can squeeze one more in there. This, this one's done. No, look how pretty that is. Oh, it's nice. It's good. It's good. It's good. All right. There's one. Let's put another layer. Because it's going to be greasy as a motherfucker. Greasy AF. As the kids say. All right. And um, some of these, honestly, these may be done. Let's, um, let's do a couple of these. This is thin. That one's done. Yeah, you definitely want to get all this oil off. I think might be done. I'm gonna take that thickest one and cut it. Oh shit, that fell apart. Well, look at that. See that? Look how nice that is. That's juicy. It's also really oily, but that's juicy. So here's the thickest one here. Um, I will cut that open. And we'll, oop, I just got oil everywhere. And we'll see. Uh, we'll see. We'll make sure it's cooked all the way before I turn it. Oh, that's the thickest one right there. So let's just cut this guy in half. Ooh, that was really dumb. <laughs> Just touched it. All right. So look at that. I mean, that's that's cooked all the way through, and that's the thickest part of the thickest cutlet. There's a little bit of fat there, but nobody will notice that. But yeah, that's that's beautiful. So there we go. We're done with the cutlets. <clears throat> all right. Um, hold on. So now I can turn off the oven. I have no place to put this pan in right now. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna stick this. this. Uh, I'm still trying to make dinner too, but at the same time. Ooh. Okay. So that's something I'd, I'd actually like to do is, um, and that's back here is our sauce. I have um, saucing. It doesn't make any sense. So here's what I do. So I'll do this, and then it's it's it means more dirty dishes, but I do the dishes anyway. So I'll go like this, and then boom, and then look at all that. Oh my god, so much oil. But it will uh, we'll get all the oil out now. How do we do the cutlets? Well, and back here I have some some mozzarella. Some of this is from Jake's recipe the other night. And this is I bought in International Market. It's got Arabic on it, but um, it tastes fine. I'm going with it. Okay. So, we are going to, and this is, this is done enough. As long as this is all liquid. I'm actually not going to cook it again because um, they'll probably just put it back in their fridge. But here's what we do. So we got our sauce. And this is if if you want to know how to make the sauce, uh, go back to my previous video where I made I'm, I showed you how to make my grandma's sauce. But here it is. I had it in the freezer and I just thawed it out. So all right. So what we do is we put a layer on the bottom, kind of similar to what we did with the cookie sheet. to coat the bottom. There we go. Now, put a layer. And um, I may mix in some of the, yeah, you know what? So my wife really likes the really thin cutlets. Love you. I'm, so I'm not gonna give them all this. So we're gonna, we're gonna save some of these guys. See? 
So 20 years of marriage gets you. Fucking thin pellets. All right. So these are thin. We're going to save some of these. We'll give them some of the thicker ones. Ah, God damn, it's hot. All right. Yes, I have a few tools to pick these up that are not my fingers. What up? So let's we got some of these. Boom. Um, give them this. We're gonna take this. We're gonna, we're gonna keep some of these. Maybe that's a thick one, but I, I'm, I may just give them one more. This is a this is the this bottom layer is the. Uh, Those are the thickest ones. So let's see. We'll shift that guy over. We'll do, um, here, let's do this. We'll do this. We'll do this guy up here. And we'll do this big motherfucker. It is. Oop, it's falling apart. It's so juicy, it's falling apart. Yeah, oh, man, that's good looking. There we go. And, uh, we'll probably stick a little piece in there. Okay, let's do, let's do like this. And we'll stick this this guy in here. Boom. There we go. So that's it. And the rest of these cults we keep. Damn, these do really smell good too. Actually, you know what we ought to do? Let's um Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. Mmm. Yeah, that motherfucker's good. Alright, so, oh, here was my other knife. Alright. Alright, so, we got sauce, cutlets. Let's do some more sauce. Now we cover everything. And I, I, my, the way, my, again, the way my mother used to do it is she would cover the whole, she would actually put layer after layer and put, put sauce in between each layer and all that. It doesn't come out as good and the cheese sticks. So you don't, you don't, I mean, some of your cutlets don't get cheese on. Um, it sucks. Actually, I'm just going to dump all that. There we go. So what we're gonna do is just do I do a single layer now. Usually I'll actually reuse the same cookie sheet and uh, and then cover it with cheese. And then um, usually it's when I'm making it, we're eating it right then. So um, I just serve it right off the cookie sheet. It comes out better. But this this is going somewhere else. So. We gotta cut the cheese! Alright. <laughs> that was, um. <laughs> that was something that my mom. Uh. This is not hot. Something that my mom said to my brother years and years ago. So, alright, hey, let's do this. So now we're gonna, we're gonna actually cut up this mozzarella. Um, I have some here that this was that fancy shit. Alright. So, um. I just cut it up the, the way the way that my mom used to do it. She used to do it like this, and then um, and um, nowadays though I just buy the shredded shit because I mean what are you trying to prove seriously? It's fucking cheese. Nobody's gonna know. It's gonna melt. Use that first, and I'll go to the other stuff. 
So, all right. So there we go. We just spread this over top. And then what you want to do, now that the chicken is cooked, the sauce is cooked, we've got plenty of cheese. Um, So what you want to do is uh, put it in your oven, put it on a low temperature. Again, everything is cooked. So you really just want this cheese to melt. And once the cheese, oops, this bag is there. Once the, uh, once the cheese is melted, you're good to go. Like you kind of, I like it to be melted and just a little bit brown. Like when the cheese just starts to brown a little bit, you know it's done. There we go. And that's, that's chicken parm. I'm not going to be able to show you a finished product because I'm not the one eating it. But uh, there you go.